Hi folks, this is the sort of casual conversation, design overview, philosophy talk about the pneumatic DIY Tiny G Arduino CNC engraving system. If you haven't watched the part three video where we sort of show it off, I would definitely say watch that first. We love this machine. We're really happy with a lot of it, but we also got some things to improve. And I want to talk about those. I want to talk about you know where we are today. One of the things that I wish were the case was that there was somebody, an entrepreneur who came in and really standardized linear rails and automation equipment at a lower level. Just like what I would say SparkFun and Adafruit have done with electronics. They've taken like chips that were complex to use and said, hey, here's a breakout board, here's how to do it, we're importing them at a lower price. Because uh, I don't really have a good answer to tell you other than take a look at the bill of materials below. But the x-axis longer linear rails here and here we purchased new. Um, the top y-axis uh, round bar ground rails uh, we bought off eBay new but imported. I think they're probably all imported but a little sketch, you know, budget oriented. And then these small linear rails that you see here on the Z were surplus used off eBay. They were actually really cheap and they're great. Um, but that's what I don't like is it's hard to give you a concrete bill of materials for you to build this because you, you kind of got to be scrappy and that's why using Fusion 360 or some sort of CAD modeling software is, in my opinion, really important because you've got to figure out the ball screw travel length, which usually needs to be a little bit longer, say, than the um, linear rail length, depending on how you want the machine travel to work. Um, as an overall design thing, the thing I will mention is it's really important to have this machine be square and parallel and there need, can't be any binding. That's really important. So we did a lot of testing with no steppers attached with the motion of the, the screws, um, or excuse me, of the rails, and then we tested the screws by hand because the steppers are not meant to power through a bind. Um, that's really important to getting smooth motion and fast motion. This machine isn't slow, but I still want to build one of these that is smoking fast, and I need to do some research. We may need to use different motors to get that velocity and, and speed, but I think we can do it. You saw in Fusion 360 in the first video, we're using that plasma add-in. All I really need to do is change the post to get M8 and M9 to work. We do have a little bit of a, of a mess here on the electronics. All you need to do is use the 3.3 volt out on the Tiny G for coolant. That's your M8, M9. I usually work in 5 volt electronics, not 3.3. In the bill of materials, there's a breakout board that will step that voltage up, pretty like $3, pretty easy to do. I didn't have one of those, and I have now gone through one and two fried Tiny G's. One was my fault. I thought electrostatic bags were safe. They're not. They can conduct, and I fried one. Um, the other one was a casualty from the move, it was in a project box and the cap got dinged off of it. If somebody thinks they can repair these or wants these, let me know in the comments below and uh, uh, I'd be happy to, I'd love to see these go into working homes. So my takeaway was I don't want voltage or connectivity touching my Tiny G. I don't want the thing broken. So for me, that was actually really easy to do with an Arduino. Um, here is, I don't like schematics, to, just I don't. So here is our, um, what we've done. So take a, hit pause or take a screenshot of this if you want to understand it. I'm happy to answer some questions below. And um, one of the things that we've done with our channel is we offer a lot more support uh, for folks that support us on Patreon. Patreon is also where the solid model, the CAD is for this. What's really cool is we started this over a year ago uh, before we started using Fusion 360. So it's actually modeled in SolidWorks and that's what the files are, but you can import that into Fusion 360, works fine, awesome. To quickly walk through the electronics, there's a 3.3 volt signal coming out of the Tiny G. It goes to a diode that then goes to pin two on the Arduino. Arduino is looking for pin two and it's saying, well, you know, when pin two goes high, then I'm going to turn pin 13 high because here's the thing. Arduinos can read a 3.3 volt signal and then it can output the 5 volt signal to my beefcake relay over here. 
and that is um, then what is controlling the solenoid. Again, link below for the parts here. The solenoid is then what lowers the pneumatic cylinders, and the only other thing we've got right here is a 7805 regulator because I've got a wall wart here coming in, and that's providing the 12 volt signal to toggle and power the beefcake and the solenoid, and then I just step that 12 volts down to 5 volts to power the Arduino. Again, I like it. The Tiny G is isolated from all of that stuff. The two things that we need to really do and improve, uh, I need to put some fixture clamps and threads and fasteners into the table so that it becomes this modular thing where we can drop in fixture plates and hit go for pre-programmed parts that we want to engrave. That was the original point of this. We're still going to do that. Um, but what I need to work on, and I'd love your thoughts or input below, is controlling the precise depth of the engraving. The, my thought was with pneumatic cylinders, you could basically overdrive it or push it too far down, and the, the pneumatics would absorb some of that by staying higher. That's not tr true. It's literally trying to engrave too deep, which actually speaks to the strength and quality of the engraving tool. Um, so what I had to do was have some way to con precisely control the Z. I think a lot of folks are going to tell me, use a stepper and have it control the Z like you would a CNC machine up and down. We could do that, but I want these pneumatics to work. By the way, thank you. I know everybody has said to use um, cushions on the top and bottom. We'll get to that as well. So what I've got now is just this threaded rod right here that provides a hard low and a, and a hard top, bottom top. So I can adjust this on the fly. And if the piece is flat, it's pretty much okay across it. But you don't always have flat parts, and I don't like the idea that um, this machine will either lose steps or um, the pen will actually bend. That was the original problem with our old y-axis is it was bending with no stress at all. Here, I think the solution would be to take this bracket here and make it much thicker. And honestly, that'll probably work, but I think that's throwing the wrong solution at the problem, which is I need a way to control the z-depth. What I'd love is something that actually rolls along the part and instead of basically instead of controlling the height from the top you have a like a cammed roller that's fastened to your z-axis so when it pushes down it causes that pin to just basically tattoo or that's kind of what I was thinking of push in and out um, you know the depth that you want uh, the problem with that is that if you're trying to engrave a small part and you can't put your roller on the part it's it doesn't work or um, well, that's, I haven't come up with a great solution, so I would actually love to hear some input from other folks. Otherwise, this is super fun, and you know, we're, as you guys I think have now seen, we're moving into our new shop. I want to build a much bigger one of these and turn it into a DIY router, uh, engraving machine. We, we honestly are probably going to replace our Torchmate to get a 5x10 style plasma, and I... I'm wondering, do we, do we build our own? I just think this, this is all I ever wanted to do in my life. You know, I love the machining, I love the Arduino, but for me, what I love in life is combining them into automation and motion. And we still have some work to go here. My ideal version of this machine is better mechanical functionality on the, on the engraving side. And then I want a little LCD with pre-programmed programs and it um, will have to put Tiny G on a Raspberry Pi or excuse me, chili pepper on a Raspberry Pi. That way we don't need to have a USB, you know, big computer hooked up to it. And then me or Jared or anybody can walk over to it, drop a plate on it, home it. We got to put homing switches in this. Hit, you know, scroll down to the op program you want and hit go and it just runs that engraving job. That to me, folks, is fun. That's how you make money. That's how you do stuff that's cool. So we're not quite there yet, but I had a lot of fun. Thanks for your patience. I, gosh, it was a bummer with the the move and then the move again and then um, frying the board to get this uh, get this thing across the finish line but to have fun and thanks uh, as always folks I love doing this stuff I love the uh, enthusiasm on your end as well take care see you soon